Okay, let's get started. Um, welcome to everyone for this presentation on NFV resource management and the collaboration we are doing with the Blazor project and the Promise project. And let me first introduce my two co-presenters. So we have uh, Tarek Khan. He's an architect um, for the HPE's NFV architecture. And we have Masahita Muroisan. He's a software engineer um, working for entities public and private cloud solutions. And my name is Gerald Kunzmann. I'm working for Entity Docomo, um, the lab or tourists in Europe, in Munich. And I'll guide you through the first part of the presentation and then I will hand over to my colleagues. Uh. So what we are going to see in this presentation is first I'll describe the problem. Why do we need resource reservations? Um, then we will also in, um, introduce to you the two projects. The one is the OpenStack project Blazor and the other one is an OpenFV project called Promise. Um, after this we will mention some possible solutions, how we um, think we could uh, address the problem. This is still work in progress and also we can have some discussion on how we plan to uh, um, solve these issues. And we will also then show what is the current status of the work we are doing uh, and what will be our next steps. Uh. So the first question is why do we need resource reservation? So. Uh, we have a private cloud or a managed cloud and there we don't want to over provisioning our resources. So we will always have to deal with a finite amount of resources, uh, but the demands can be infinite. And we have several uses to this cloud, so there might be concurrent access and resource integrity is very important. Um, elasticity of is very important um, capability and also different requests may have different priorities so some of the core services in our network they we need to guarantee that they're always running but there might be some other computation and processes which have lower priorities and then also for us it's not enough to just reserve a certain quota um, like 10 virtual machines, but we need for the telecom um, VNFs for the services, they may require very specific capabilities. So it's also very important that we are able to reserve specific characteristics of the resources. Um, for other um, use cases and user stories, I'd also like to you to point, go to this um, development proposal in the OpenStack product team. Here we have listed a lot of requirements and use cases uh, around resource reservation. Okay, I'm handing over to Tarek now. Uh, thank you, Gerald. Um, before I go into the use cases or the problem statement, uh, did any of you get a chance to attend the session right before this one on the first floor? You did. So you don't need to be in this session. You <laughs> So over here, we are going to talk a little bit about the basics of, of uh, reservation and why reservations required, and to give a couple of examples, some, some use cases that we have used to, to drive. They came from the Promise project, and they're driving the development of the, of the Blazor project. Um, now, of course, uh, outside of this, you, these uh, examples, I thought, you know, of course, we are sitting, almost everyone's traveling, staying in a hotel. So we can uh, also talk a little bit about analogies of, of hotel reservations, which are very applicable to what, what we're trying to do over here. So in this one, uh, one of the things is around the flexible usage. And as uh, Gerald said, uh, for private cloud, you know, no matter what we say, there's always limited capacity, and we want to be able to use it. And while it's important for almost all use cases, for the telco or NFV use case, this is exposing the, the need for, for a reservation a little bit before things are coming from other places. Indeed, this uh, session this morning was from a proposal from Scientific Working Group that's also uh, making a case for why, why something like this is required. 
So in this case, what we're talking about is if there's a consumer who's going to use a service, and you know, in this case, we just said watching TV, and understand uh, that uh, live stream doesn't necessarily require instantiation of a lot of uh, infrastructure, but in case, you know, uh, if you take it that you need to require, you want to be able to provide some service APIs, and these service APIs are going to reserve some component, and the reason the reservation is required is that we, at this point, we want, don't want the end user experience to be that we tried to do it, and the thing failed. And then uh, we, you need to have an external entity, orchestrator or something, go ahead and redo it. And it becomes a lot more important if the service chain has multiple components in it, which is to say that it has multiple VMs or multiple things that need to be deployed. If the last one fails, then service chain is not complete and we have problems on, of the user experience. So in this case, uh, we want to be able to have a service API to, to when, it, uh, when it's invoked using appropriate, uh, and, and uh, my colleagues are going to talk about it, appropriate IDs, then you want to be able to get, get access to it. And in, a, in the same thing, the other use case is that what if the same user halfway through it decides to record it? And the recording means that now some, some resources were already, already being used. Now we want to assign some additional resources. And we may have some adjacency requirement for, for these resources. So we want this uh, not, to be, not to fail as well. This is very similar to uh, you know, a group of uh, folks coming to, uh, to OpenStack Summit and uh, wanting to stay at the same hotel. If you were you know, a single person, you may, I don't think anyone does it, you may go and knock at the door of every, every hotel do, they, do you have room? Or you may reserve, and then at the time of reservation, the hotel has not assigned your room, but they had made sure there's, there's capacity available, and you have made your preferences known, and they'll try to make sure that those preferences are, are uh, uh, met. Um, so uh, kind of recapping what we just talked about, it's around flexible usage where you're able to put in your, your uh, requirements, both for immediate, should you want to, but more important for, for future use. And uh, th this will allow the, the operator of the environment to come up with innovative ways of perhaps you know, not charging or have a very small fee of, of reservation, but you pay the full price when you're actually using the resources. Um, the another, uh, the another uh, statement is, uh, especially, you know, again, more specific to NFV, but applicable to other use cases as well, that if you want to be able to, to um, assign some, some or reserve some, some resources, then there may be a need of resourcing, of reserv reserving very different types of resources. And in this case, we're saying that if your employees you know, they, at a minimum, you know, most of the employees in an organization, they'll require some kind of backup mechanism and they'll require some kind of uh, remote connectivity or VPN access. So your existing employees may have a backup for service chain along with some VPN service chain. And you may have a situation where perhaps uh, different business groups have different requirements. So it's coming from one resource pool and IP addressing. You want to be able to keep it contiguous. So you may do it, but you may want to ensure that uh, that other employees that come in, come in, they also are provided resources from the same pools. And, and if uh, you don't have a mechanism of providing this, this level of reservation, then the new employees in the same groups may not be able to get backup resources assigned in the same backup pool or the IP addresses assigned from the same IP address pool. Um, another option that comes in is where you may have and again, my hotel analogy, that you may have rooms that have different characteristics. And those room characteristics may be, you know, a nice view of the, the uh, parking garage behind you, or maybe looking down at Boston Commons. So you may, for some reasons, you may want the Boston Commons uh, view, or you may want, uh, you know, two rooms that are adjacent to yourself. In this case, we're, we're just trying to say that if you have uh, different that you have resource pools or compute nodes that expose different capabilities, and they may be, you know, some providing uh, better storage, some providing better connectivity, then you want to be, be able to, when you're making the reservation, be able to, to request appropriate resources. And again, we're all talking about using it through APIs, 
and the uh, requester essentially goes to, to one endpoint and uh, makes these uh, reservation requests. And, and the last one comes into, since we are adding this time factor in the, in the uh, system, reservation system, now we have a little bit richer information that we are able to potentially collect. Now we are, we are making reservations, and which is, uh, which is uh, very important information to be able to use for, for capacity management and some other uh, uh, management uh, scenarios. So you want to be able to, to use this, this time information, making the reservations, and the, the reality of it, how people are able to, are, are using whatever has been, resor been, been used. So, so it uh, provides a much richer set of uh, primitives that can be used by capacity management system. Metering also becomes a little bit more, more uh, richer information on what is it that people thought they, they're gonna use and what is it they're actually using. And then coming down to uh, the same level of information is, uh, can be made available for data and analytics engines and, and of course, you know, providing a group that, that lets people have a view of, of uh, how their reservations uh, are, or what their reserve resources against the utilized resources are. And with that, I'm um, gonna hand it over to Masahit Tassad. I think I'll, I'll take that part. So um, several years ago, when we started to look into virtual network functions, um, this problem came up that reservation seems to be an important feature. So um, we tried to find some supporters or some community so that we can um, work on this issue and, and try to uh, find a solution for it. So uh, one of the activities we started was in OPNFV. We initiated it, the Promise project. Um, so this project is exactly addressing the, these two aspects that Tariq just mentioned. So on the one hand, we need to have these reservations. On the other hand, also we need to be able to manage the available resources in the future. Um, what did we do in this project? So we started, first we started writing down the requirements from NFV perspective that we have for resource reservation. Um, so it's, it's very important that we can do reservations for future usage, but also for some use cases it might be good if we can do reservations for, for immediate usage. Um, imagine, for example, you have a very complicated service that you want to set up and this requires allocation of many different types of resources with specific characteristics. And if you start doing this now sequentially and you, like after the third or fourth step, you run into a failure, then you need to roll back and start everything again. If you have a reservation, you can kind of test already whether the resources that you need and the, the combination of the resources is um, available or not. Um, also, what is very important for us is um, we are supporting the, the Etsy NFV specifications and also this is why we need to have a solution which is very well aligned with this one. The OpenFV Promise project, at the moment we are having bi-weekly telcos, so if you're interested in this topic, I invite you to join one of our telcos um, where we can discuss also in, in more detail about um, this topic and all the information about the Promise project, just go to the wiki page in OPNFV and you can find the meeting dates, um, the, the, the emailing list and so on. So then also um, in OPNFV we cannot do the work standalone, but we need also some upstream um, project uh, where the code it will be hosted for example. And here we identified the OpenStack Blazor project, which is the reservation as a service uh, project in OpenStack. This has been already started a couple of years ago, but then it was kind of stalled for one and a half years. And now just recently, um, a small group of different vendors and operators have revived this project. And we have a lot of sessions also during this forum um, around the Blazor project. So in the Blazor project, the target is we can lease or reserve some resources in the cloud environment for a specific amount of time, either immediately or in the future. And these resources can either be virtual resources, like instances, volumes, or networks, but it can also be hardware resources, so you can also reserve a full host 
with a specific characteristic. Um, some of you may know this project. It was formerly um, labeled Climate, but it was then um, the name was changed to Blazor. And also here we have weekly meetings, um, this time IRC meetings. So if you're interested in this activity, just join one of our IRC meetings. Also the URL is given here, so you can find all related information about the project here. And with this, I want to give over um, to Masahito. He will explain the potential solutions that we have to address the resource reservation as part of the Blazor project. Yeah. Uh -oh. I, thanks, Gerard. I'm Masahito. I'm working for Blazor project. So in my part, I want to show you how the Blazor project solve each problem in that each use case is shown by Tariq. So for the flexible usage scenario, we can use the basic feature of Blazor. The Blazor defines that leases as a top level resource types in its API, and the leases have, one lease has multiple reservations, and one reservation has, a, has its reservation ID. So user create leases and the reservations with Blazor API, and then the user create their open stack resources related to the reservation with its ID. So back to the streaming li live streaming TV scenario. This is how Blazor work in this scenario. First, customer switch on device to live stream TV, and then service API try to reserve our computer resources, as many as resources they will use in that streaming, that streaming. Then Blazor try to reserve, and then if the Blazor can't can reserve the resources, it means that the service APIs can create their resources in this infrastructure. For the future recording request, it. The, the station is simi quite similar to that streaming scenario. First, customer try to record a future event, and then service APIs try to ensure the resources they will use in, in that request. Then if, Bra if Brazer can create their reservation for that request. The, the recording event will can create their computer resources for the recording event. For the next heterogeneous resource reservation, the the use case is quite similar to the flexible usage. So in this use cases, Blazor will reserve storage resources and uh, network resources as well as computer resources like, like uh, VM or con uh, containers. So when customer create their backup resources in their cloud, the Blazor try to reserve the resources for new employees as well as the current employees. So after the new employees coming in their division, they can will really use these reserved resources in same infrastructure in that uh, with the old employees. And then next for resource negotiation, Blazor will work works like a, a 
resource endpoints to identify best case deployment scenario. So I will show you the scenario. So when customer try to create service chains with specific characteristics of for the NF, uh, VNF, Breda ask all data centers that they can accommodate the request in their cloud. It means that they try to create reservation is equal to ask, asking that the center can create the reservation. And then some data center will respond to the request. Then if the data center can create the reservation, it means that the browser will offer that user the, the reservation that the, that, that reservation has enough amount of resources to the request from the customer. And finally, Brazer project will give us some good information for the resource manageability, for the capacity management, metering, analytics, and for GUI. So first, for the capacity management, Blazor will give administrator the information about the usage and availability in the future of resources. So the administrator can think how many, how many resources will use in the future. And for metering, Blazor relate utilization information to metering service like Serometa, uh, Monasca, and your own metering service. And for data analytics engine, Blazor will give the information to the engine about the pattern of request to how the user want to use their resources. And then the engine can calculate the data, can, can analysis any data of the usage and so on. And of course, the Blazor project will provide some GUI based on Fryzone, so administ all administrator can create, can handle the information uh, the GUI as well as the CLI and API. And f in my last part, I want to show, show the current status and the next steps of Blazor project. First, Blazor, latest Blazor project release is Okata release number 020. Uh, the Blazor project is a little different from other projects because the project was inactive between Kilo to Newton release. So we focused on reviving the Blazor project in Okata, re Okata release, such as using the also library instead of the, their own library and using Keystone V2 V3 API instead of V2 API. And of course, we updated some documentation following that changes. And for Pike release numbered, will be numbered 030. We are focusing on some improvement of reservation for computer resources. The main, the main feature in, one of main feature in the Pike release is new instance reservation. Because the old instance reservation in Blazor project was duplicated because the old reserva instance reservation super relies on the Nova V2 API extension 
that is already that was already duplicated and removed from Nova project. And then the another features are roughly categorized for improving the operability of Blazor API, such as improving the improving the updating or reservation by API and so on. And in Blazor project, in addition to the technical side, we are planning, we are thinking of improving the community side of features. Because like a, currently Blazor project, sorry, the contributor of Blazor project is only from NFV areas and uh, scientific areas. So of course we have some use cases, but we are uh, welcome to people that people who are from different areas because we need more use cases and more uh, requests for the reservation. So if you are have any request to the reservation, please join us and uh, we are super welcome to them. Yeah. That's yeah. All. Thanks a lot. Um, so yeah, I think this is, this is very crucial. So at the moment, as, as you see, we, we just started to um, adding some new functionalities and features to Blazor. And we're still in the process of shaping how we do this. Uh, so we need your input. We need your feedback. We need your use cases so that we go in the right direction. Yeah? I, I want to avoid that we go to a dead end. And we, we have a solution which is only for uh, so solving some of the problems on the, on the short term. But it's very important also that this is a solution that on the long run will be beneficial to not just NFV, but also to um, other communities. Uh, and so I'd really like to encourage you, go, go to the Blazor page, uh, check out the, the blueprint specs that we're currently drafting, give, give you feedback. Um, maybe join our, our weekly RC meetings. And yeah, inc inc um, increasing the participation of the community is very important here. Yeah. And I think we were quite fast also um, with our presentation, so we have uh, some time for Q&A. So do you have any questions around our use cases that we presented? Of course, these were simplified scenarios. Um, do you have any questions on the specific projects of if Promise or Blazor? Um, please come to the mics and raise your questions. Couple of questions. I didn't quite get what is your unit of reservation, right? Uh, in our case, if we want to do reservations, I want to be able to say maybe I want to reserve this 10 VNF, let's say, and the VNF is a construct of many things together. Are, is your unit, do I have to ask you to reserve as many cores, as many m much memory storage, or do you have something different? How, how do you express the reservation? So we have different granularities in mind. So on the one hand, if you know you want to, you need to start a VNF, then you know the VNF needs certain um, underlying infrastructure resources. Mm -hmm. So maybe you say, okay, I need like five cores, but NUMA should be enabled and all should be in, like in the same um, data center. So such features you would give in the reservation. Yeah? But how are you expressing that? Because in my case, we had, let's say, have a heat stack that expresses that the need that maybe have a flavor identified, a host aggregate that will have the right CPU pinning, NUMA boundaries, whatever it needs. Uh, do I have to go and extrapolate all that out of the, the heat stacks and then express it in a different way to to Blazor? Or, or is there a thought of maybe you can extrapolate it yourself if I give you a heat stack in example? Ideally, this should be possible that if you have a flavor already, this should be possible you can reserve this particular flavor. But you see what I'm getting at? Because the heat stacks could have 700 resource types in some cases. There's a lot of things to satisfy that need. If I want to reserve that, I don't want to have to go to the trouble of 
taking all of that uh, as a separate element of data. Yeah, I, uh, the the Braza, first of all, Braza doesn't take over the heat stacks. No, so I, I'm talking about maybe being a source of an input, and then you can extrapolate what the resources are from That's there. You don't have to execute the stack. Mm -hmm. You just have to understand the JAML and pull the requirements of that stack. As opposed to asking the user to extrapolate all of that, and now uh, it's another item of work, right, As I, yeah. if you will. Another task of managing the VNF now to, to, to be able to gather all that. Just an idea. The other question I had is how do you deal mm -hmm. with uh, failure scenarios when you reserve something, and again, it, it dealt with placement and all of that, mm -hmm. and, and something goes wrong and you lose some host or something, and you have the reservation, but you can't satisfy it anymore because you lost capacity in that target site. Yeah, yeah, good, good, good questions, I think. Uh, the question was is under the discussion in Blazor team, how we handle the failure in the computer resources or other resources. We are discussing now about how it depends on the user of Blazor or cloud, cloud service provider. It's like if you are the public cloud user, uh, sorry, cloud, pu cloud public service provider, the you could have some priorities to the instances or storage or something. Then the the raw priorities will be removed from the reservation or something. On the other hand, in the NFV side, the sum of um, the use case with it will be different. Like these are different, so. Yeah, so the, the simple answer is it's under the discussion now. Okay, you have yeah. Yeah. I mean, for sure you need some notifications to the user. Um, I, I like this comparison also to the hotel reservation. Of course, there could be a fire in one of the rooms and you have full house and you need to cancel one of the requests. Uh, um, then maybe you have some VIP customers who are frequently visiting your hotel, so you don't want to, to throw them out of the reservation system. but someone else maybe. Yeah. Okay. And the third question, you talked about Blazor managing multiple cloud, multiple regions. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe I misunderstood, but how is, how is that working in Blazor if, if you're, you have many, in our case we have hundreds of regions and mm -hmm. we moved away from a centralized keystone so every region has their own keystone. Mm -hmm. in, in that model, how would Blazor work is it independent per region? How do you know about multiple regions? Uh, are you living on top above the regions mm -hmm. located somewhere else? Or? Uh, in current implementation, Braza only on top of one of crowd. One region. one region, yes. So so March region is also under the discussion and it depends on the design and uh, it depends on the user of architecture of users. Right. Like you, you are using Keystone on each region, right? right? But some users will use uh, the Keystone for all of their different regions. So, of course, we. I think if there is any use case or a request, we should. Uh, sorry, we not not we. Blazor project should support multi regions. Is, is it the answer for your question? Yeah, yeah, I think multi regions to be a, something you support sometime. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank you. Uh, hi, folks. Uh, it was a nice presentation. Thank you. And the gentleman already asked most of the question I had, but uh, I have one additional question. Mm -hmm. I, I do understand how you do the reserve, reserve the, the resources, but my question is how are you going to release them? I mean, like, if you going to use the external cloud for your resources it, when it, from the pricing perspective is almost same as you're using it, right? Mm -hmm. So does Blazor manage the resource, uh, I mean, release? I mean, releasing the resource? Uh, it, it means that which component will be in charge of deleting or creating resources? Is it for, for example, like use, 
at, at first step, you say that you need 100 VMs, mm -hmm. but when you're going to actually use it, you mm -hmm. might say, okay, I'm going to use 50 of them, and mm -hmm. left, left another 50 is I'm, I'm not going to use. So mm -hmm. you don't have to pay for the, mm -hmm. the rest of the, the VMs, and you can release those resources, right? Uh, I think it's it depends on the uh, sorry I I usually say depends on the your station but I think it depends on the service provider the strategy for the uh, thing or something like that so if your crowd want to uh, want to audit or check yep. the number of your reservation the changing of the number of instances is not matter but how but if your crowd think the number of instances used in real world is yeah. matter uh, you should change that reserve your reservation okay so yeah. it's not managed in the blazer yes no. I would say this is out of scope of Blazor, so there can be some policies how you need to pay for the reservation and for the actual usage. And I think this is not part of the scope of Blazor project. Okay, okay, got it. But Thank in you. your specific use case, like you were saying, you reserved 100, but you're only using 50 right now, and 50 maybe you'll use six months down the line. Yeah. Now, because there's a time factor that's been added now, so you'll reserve perhaps you know, from a specific time, Okay. Now, if there's another reservation request that comes mm -hmm. in, which will only use from month two to month four, okay. then that can go ahead and make use of those resources. Oh, yeah. So this time factor, you're able to slice in that way. Oh, great. Yeah. So, so there's still advantage, and, and completely agree from Garol's point of view, that you know, how you monetize it, how you, you know, do it, that's Pricing outside it, yeah. closer. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there are two features of Placer that will be related. So one is the update of the reservation. So again, similar to the hotel reservation, if your company wants to come to the summit and you plan for 100 colleagues, and then like one month before you realize, OK, the budget is not there, I have to reduce to 50, you would inform the hotel and cancel some of the reservation or half the reservation size. Um, the other one, what we also think about, and this is also part of the ETCNFV specification, is kind of a no-show. Um, so, if you say my reservation sh should start from tomorrow um, noon, and then within 24 hours you are not actually using the resources, yeah. then, for example, also these resources can be freed for other um, users. Great, thank you. Okay. So, seems nobody's on the mic, so I may take the opportunity to ask another question. <laughs> Does Blazor API support some kind of a bulk? Reservation. I mean, like input. Uh, I think gentleman was asked similar kind of question. Mm -hmm. Can Blazor API get uh, input from the YAML file or something like I want 100 computer nodes and this kind of network and this kind of volumes attached to them? Such kind of feature is supported or the on the roadmap? We'll support it. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. So this is what we call a lease, which can have several reservations inside. Uh, so you can have the lease kind of is a bulk. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, OK, we would have time for one more question. I think people are satisfied. Thanks for your participation in our presentation. And if you check the forum schedule, you will see there are a few upcoming um, sessions also on reservations or uh, related to reservations. So I'd welcome you to also join those discussions. Thanks a lot.